Yes, indeed. Welcome. Yes, indeed. Welcome to the feature match area here for our final round today. And what a round it is. Riley Knight joined by Corey Baumeister here. Corey, we have got an absolute barnstormer here. Kai Buddha, one of the greatest of all time, playing off against Shintaro Ishimura. Shintaro Ishimura, 6-2, and two, a respectable record. He'll be very happy with the innings he's put in so far. But Corey, at 8-0, and oh, playing for a spot in the top eight. Can you believe it? Kai Buddha. Uh- I cannot believe it, and I am so excited to watch this. Such a huge moment for Kai, such a big moment for Shintaro. I'm excited to see these two duke it out. Yes, indeed, and uh, win, lose, or draw, it's going to be a fantastic match of magic. We've seen Kai's deck. We've seen Shintaro Ishimura's deck. We've seen both of these players really dominate so far. But, I mean, the talk of the town, the headline act here, Kai Buddha. For those of you who are perhaps newer to magic, welcome. By all means, welcome. But you're looking at one of the greatest of all time. And certainly, you know, in recent years, Kai hasn't been uh, the household name that he once was. But in the earlier days of Magic, he was one of, if not the greatest player, widely considered an all-timer along, alongside, you know, the likes of John Finkel, another mm-hmm. uh, another superstar of yesteryear. These days we talk about Nassif, we talk about PV, we talk about LSV, but back in the day... Buddha and Finkel, the best that ever were. Uh, Kai Buddha has seven top finishes. Oh, sorry, sorry, 11. Sorry, excuse me. 11 top finishes, seven wins, wins. of those wins. 11. Um, uh, seven GP wins as well out of 15 top eights. This is a bloke who knows how to sling some cardboard, be it analog or digital. But his last huge win, his last big win was in 2003. Corey, wow. when he won, uh, sorry, excuse me, 2002, when he won Pro Tour Boston as part of a team limited event. That was during the uh, the 2002, 2003. Uh, no, no, it was 2003, excuse me, Pro Tour Chicago. It was 2003. He did one win in, in, in 03 mm-hmm. as well. Uh, since then, he's won a couple of, he's won a Grand Prix and top eight a few things here and there. But it's been a long time since Kai has really been at uh, the top of his game, I suppose, uh, yeah. is what we're looking at here. And, and here he is ready to do it once again. Yeah, and even has a Mythic Championship top finish as well recently. So Kai has remained relevant as well and just you know, one of the best to ever do it and one of the nicest guys I've ever met as well. So it's going to be uh, awesome to watch this match and uh, see how he navigates this. So let's see here. Double Cinderclasm, Frostbite, and Prismari Command joining the Yorion that was put in hand and a disdainful stroke to round it out. Shintaro Ishimura, a hand that is a little more proactive, got some threats in it. Lurus, Thieves Good Enforcer, got that Agadem's Awakening as a form of recursion. And Crippling Fear, which I don't think is going to do too much work in this matchup here. Yeah, Crippling Fear not really doing great. And we did see just a lot of players not doing much. Uh, Kai Buddha did get his expressive iteration that we normally see on turn three. Uh, you know, countered unless you paid one with the Lofty Denial, which really brutal to happen on turn three, but so common to play expressive iteration before you play the land anyways. It's really all we've seen so far. It's just a staring game so far. Yeah, and look, let's ca- try to characterize this matchup because we talk about control uh, mm-hmm. matches where, you know, you want to be the last person generally to blink. You want to be the last person who starts committing threats to the battlefield, tapping your mana, what sort of thing, you know, that sort of thing. Is that the case here? Does control, does rogues take a controlling posture in this matchup or are they the aggressor here and is Kai the, the one who's sort of, you know, painted into that controlling role? Because the, the rogues there can, it does have controlling elements, right? Yeah, I think the rogues deck, traditional rogues that we've been seeing before, is still trying to play this tempo control deck where you still want to get your threats out here and there uh, whenever it's timely to do so, um, and then really go over the top with into the story. Shintaro's list is a little different. We're seeing these Vantress Gargoyles where they want you to be a little bit more pre- proactive. There's less into the story, so you don't have time to just draw a bunch of cards. So while I normally think that is very, very true, it's a little bit shifted. Um, with Shintaro's build, but especially with how Kai's hand is set up, it is all just deal with your threats right now. No real proactive elements like Omen of the Sea, Shark Typhoon, Kiora Best of the Sea Gods. These are the things you really want to be pushing ahead. And even a little head shake there from Kai, really looking for those cards because, well, we're getting close to discarding. Um, and, and that's not what you want to do in these control type mirror matches. You don't want to be giving away free value. 
the other thing you certainly want to be doing is hitting your land drops and kind of missing yep. a, on a land there, which he'll not be too happy with. Although, you know, he, look, he's got plenty of options. going to take one off of this TGE. Uh, is this just going to be Agadim's Awakening? No, surely not hard cast to you. Usually Agadim's Awakening land. is used. Yeah, it's used as a tool to get back Lurus 90% of the time, I would say. So I don't think we're going to see that committed. No, just discarding here. Just discarding that crippling fear. Yep. And I mean, that that's a blank ski, so you don't mind getting rid of that one. Yeah, you might see that as kind of a weird play where Shintaro could have just played a land and then avoided discarding or even played a Thieves Guild Enforcer. But like you said, Crippling Fear, just a complete blank here. So really no um, no problem just throwing that one away. It's, the best it's going to do is maybe clean up a shark, something like that. And that's if Kai's sharks aren't larger than a 3-3, which we're already probably going to see um, a larger shark here. But here is that kind of awkward scenario where now Kai is feeling pressure, not because of the 1-1, one, one, but because of hand size. Giving away value in these kind of matchups just for free when you don't have cards like Crippling Fear in your deck is a little bit more of a cost because Kai's cards all kind of do something here, but probably pretty happy to give away a Cinderclasm here or maybe a Disdainful Stroke. Yeah, he's going to get rid of a Disdainful Stroke. He's got two of them, and Disdainful Stroke doesn't target too many things in this matchup. Uh, it can hit Agadine's Awakening, of course. The other card that it will hit, crucially, is into the story, mm. but, you know... As is, as is the case against most Lurus decks, it's not at its best. Exactly. And here we're going to see what Kai really wants to do is kind of chain together these Shark Typhoons. You really want to be able to just be able to do this turn after turn after turn, force Shintaro to deal with these Sharks with one-for-one one spot removal. And meanwhile, Kai will be drawing a card, kind of getting these pseudo two-for-one. So that's what uh, Kai is going to be looking for here. The Shark Typhoon X equals four. Let's see what the response is from Ishimura. Power word kill in response to the cycle and kills the shark. Not surprising, but Buddha still even on cards there. Finds a couple of lands here. Going to play the Field of Ruin. I don't know what the chances of him hitting some of that four spike are. So yeah, he goes to the Gyre Ruins instead. Unsurprising to see that one. It's probably not going to be the most useful card. Yep, 100%. And a nice uh, nice controlled, disciplined play by Kai here. Not trying to force anything out. Not put himself in any bad position where things can go from you know, a completely stable board state to a really bad board state if you tapped out for something like Yorian, even though there's nothing really else to be doing here except maybe a Prismari command. Yeah, and even holding on to these Cinderclasms here, hoping that he can maybe pick up a second Enforcer. Oh, no, never mind. All right, yep. well, I tried. I tried. Yeah, and Shintaro, you know, look at look at his hand. Has a bunch of other creatures to be playing and has, you know, danced around this quite nicely and making this Cinderclasm only a one-for-one, one, but, you know, Kai is just like, all right, I got to do something eventually here. Might as well uh, cast this removal spell. Yeah, and even if it just deals with this TG, which it will, uh, seeing as it was kicked, uh, it means mm -hmm. that Kai, even if he's milled out for 100 billion, uh, it will still kill kill the Thieves' Guild Enforcer, even as a 3-2, so... Tidy little play there from Kai, and Ishimura's got a smile on his face as his uh, Thieves' Good Enforcer <laughs> always goes does. down. Always fun to watch Shintaro's uh, camera. Always pretty animated when he's playing. Uh, Kai, a little bit more business, I would say. Yes, indeed. And see here's is Thieves' Good Enforcer. Another one. Is there going to be a third Thieves' Good Enforcer here from Ishimura? Or is he happy to just play them one at a time? So 3 2 now, it's a respectable threat. You don't have to commit the second one. It seems like Shintaro is very happy just playing one-for-one one threats and just saying, well, this this is a deck has to deal with your threats. There's no yeah. you know, way that they're going to go over the top with a bunch of creatures, right? Like, so just playing one threat at a time and you don't even have to worry about something like a giant shark to be coming in to uh, do a block here on these Thieves Guild Enforcers because of the Death Touch Clause. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. pretty smart play to be holding back on these, trying to play around Cinderclasm from Shintaro. Cling to dust as well, cycling away. And, uh, yeah, Ishimura definitely taking a, a slower stance, which I think is fine. Yeah. I mean, if you're opening yourself up for two... You're opening yourself up for two for ones if you play a second uh, Thieves' Good Enforcer here. You know your opponent's playing multiple copies of Cinderclasm. Now they cling to dust. I like this. I really like this approach from Ishimura. Staying ahead yeah. on cards. Has got a clock coming in here against Kai. <laughs> Laughing about drawing another cling to dust here. Uh, but yeah, I love the approach as well. Just get your value off clings. Clings are really supposed to be all about hitting these escape cards from the Demir Rogue side, but it does still have that mode in these long controlling grinding 
uh, matchups where if you escape it once, twice, all of a sudden you look at this card and it drew you four or five cards. It's it's like a mini end of the story if given the right amount of time. He's good enforcer also being demoted back down to just a 1-1 one, one here, although that'll change in short order. Field of Ruin's going to take out the uh, Hive of the Eye Tyrant. That was short order. There it is. And Field of Ruin, we'll a really important card at the moment. I wonder yeah. if there's going to be some kind of... Uh, what we're going to do about lands like Faceless Haven, the rest of the creature land, the, the Hive, the, mm -hmm. uh, the Hydra, the Lair... Uh, the den of the bugbear, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we previewed it today. We previewed oh, it today. It's pithing needle. Oh, is that is that going to be it? Is it? <laughs> there we go. Yep. Uh, okay, that'll work, I guess. All right. So if we're seeing a Shintaro play like he's been playing before, it's time for just another one threat. Uh, make sure it waits till Kai deals with that and then deploy some more things. And as it stands right now, Kai does not have a great answer to even Luris. You know, Luris, the Cinderclasm is pretty valuable, but if that Cinderclasm is cast to deal with the Thieves Guild Enforcer, then with two Disdainful Strokes in hand, mm. I guess we do have the Sod coming, but the Negate can deal with that to get it going. So this plan from Shintaro is looking pretty nice um, looking really to be able good, to yeah. put eye on the back foot. And I, I think it's, it's very judicious here from Ishimura playing one thread at a time, winnowing mm -hmm. away Kai's life total, you know, piece after piece. Look, this can change. You know, Kai can start, Buddha can start drawing some cards that's going to turn things around for him. Mm -hmm. But as it is, he's under a respectable clock, a work, Merfolk Wind Robber as well. This is a pretty risk free investment onto the battlefield because it can be, it can, you know, be cycled away at instant speed for a card. So you're not going to be down on that. It's just disciplined and patient play here from Ishimura, and I'm, I'm here for it. Cinderclasm yeah, I... now. Great play, I agree. And we got Wind Robber to be able to just draw that card. And, oh, another Drown in the Lock. Like, right now, Shintaro has just got a hand full of disruption and has yep. really been lining up this play where he puts so much mana into play and eventually just plays Luris, has so much disruption to protect it, and what's Kai going to do at that point? This is going to be a big turn here for Ishimura. If this is the Luris turn, with all of this stuff to keep to protect it as well, it's going to be very difficult for to fight through this. Look, he's it's been Let's unfortunate. He has drawn two copies of Disdainful Stroke against zero copies of Into the Story, so these, mm -hmm. this hasn't been uh, this hasn't matched up well. But even if Buddha has seen this coming, Ishimura has got a handful of answers here. Yeah, we're going to see some fireworks this turn. There's no way Shintaro doesn't want to fight over this. I mean, there is some thought to just you know, letting it be countered and agademsing it back later, but doesn't seem like the line Shintaro's going to go for. I think this seems like a turn where you protect Luris with all you got and not even going to need that many spells to protect this. You know, one more Drown in the Lock to protect against this Frostbite. And at that point, that's all the firepower Kai has. So Kai needs a pretty big draw here. And I don't even know exactly what it is. Merfolk Wind Robber or the Thieves Guild Enforcer, the options here for Ishimura. Yep. I think he's going to go for the Wind Robber just because it guarantees him an extra card, and that's what we've been looking at. You know, he, he hasn't been playing a super, super aggressive game. He's been playing a game that has been based around eking out incremental advantage. Happy to let that Frostbite resolve, even with Drown the Lock as an option there. I think if Shint Shintaro had perfect information on the hand, he would have not done that. No. Because, you know... Shintar was thinking there's a lot I had to play around and I didn't want to lose all my drowns here, but with how it stands, there was only one card you had to counter and that was that Frostbite, so. And still just drawing ahead with these cling to dusts. Finds an into the story, that's a big draw. That's a big draw. And another thing's good in force, that's all four of them now. So, interesting decision here. Do you go for the Agadine's Awakening to try to bring back the Lurus? You do not. Ishimura playing very conservatively. Very, especially maybe without that Thieves Guild Enforcer, we might have saw that. But yeah. Thieves Guild Enforcer with Wind Robber is a clock. You know, I mean, uh, that is a very decent clock already. And we'll mm -hmm. see if this end of the story gets fired off and how much Shintaro wants to fight over that one. So Thieves Guild Enforcer milling another two here. Burning Hands can take care of that to mitigate this a little bit. Yeah, not even firing off into the story. So let's see if Kai wants to take another four damage. He doesn't, so he's going to clip this uh, the wings of this Thieves Guild Enforcer. 
And go down to 10. He's not going to be too worried about being milled out. He's playing an 80 card deck, don't forget. Mm -hmm. All right, Bony G is not a bad draw. Bony G is not bad. The one thing, it's kind of awkward with Wind Robber because if you do just sacrifice it, then you you don't get the Bone Crusher as well. One thing Kai really wishes that he had here was that Hall of the Storms Giant. Like, that's the one card that there's not really, you know, the best answer for. So what Ishimura wants to do here. He's been slowly and carefully maneuvering himself into position. Just a reminder as well that this is not a, uh, you know, this is not, these aren't the conditions that Ishimura, I bet, would uh, would want to be playing in. Uh, the At the moment, the time in Japan is 20 to 9 in the morning. It's incredible that he's putting up such an, it's incredible that his mind is still as sharp as this after having played Magic through the night. So you've really, really got to hand it to him here. He's playing masterfully well, even in some pretty adverse conditions, time zones being what they are. Yeah, absolutely. Some phenomenal play from both players here, uh, being sharp at any hours of the day. And, and there it is. It resolves. That is a, a huge swing for Shintaro. And for Buddha as well. I mean, it's 10 to, 10 to oh, sorry, 20 to, to 2 in the morning for him as well. So neither of these players with a bit of a, you know, with anything uh, approaching a home ground advantage, but still playing their guts out here. And I'm particularly impressed by Ishimura, the way that he's really, really dug his heels into this. Yep. Absolutely. And we saw a little wince from Kai there because seeing that expressive iteration go into the graveyard, that's the card. That's the card he's looking for. Sharks are great and everything, but you got to expect there's answers for that. You really want to just start chaining together expressive iterations from this is a control deck, gaining a bunch of card advantage like that and really sculpting your hand because as it stands, hey, that's a great draw. That's an absolutely great draw. But as it stands, there is five answers to that shark typhoon. I love the hard cast. Not going to work out, though. Drown of the Lock is going to take okay. out this enchantment. Can't let that resolve, of course. And again, these, is this another cling to dust here? My goodness me. Yeah, My and it looks like me. there's a lot of food when it comes to this yeah. cling. We, Shintara hasn't escaped one of these clings in a while. I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, there wasn't enough to play three clings. Um, and and that's just just gonna be insane this game. He's he's just wow. he's got so many cards in hand now. Soaring Thought Thief can turn up the pressure as well. Just gonna just gonna play it out there as well. I like this. I think he's kind of yep. figured out that Kai is just kind of doesn't have a lot going on in the hand here. And so this is gonna halve the clock very neatly. Is there gonna be another Soaring Thought Thief? No. Okay. <laughs> No, not really needed because now we just do have a lethal attack next turn. So I would sure, not be sure. too shocked for Shintaro to maybe flashback a cling or something. And wow. that's it. Game number one. Wow. I mean, I take my hat off to him. Shintaro Ishimura there. He played his guts out. That was an incredible game of magic. I love the way he positioned himself. From the very beginning, he recognized he wasn't going to walk into stuff like Cyndaclasm. He wasn't going to give Kai Buddha a chance to spend his mana efficiently. And as a result, we saw rogues play this tricksy uh strategy that it's that it's known for playing yeah. a threat protecting it trying to get across the line with just that you remove that threat here's another one you know what i mean and we saw stuff yeah. from ishimura that i don't think a lot of, a lot of people would would not have taken the lines that he did i think he was richly rewarded for it you know, yeah, that was incredible because most of the time you don't just have that many rogues, right? Like you play one, maybe you play two, but Shintara had the rogues. Shintara had multiple Thor uh, Thieves Guild Enforcers, speak of the devil, um, to be able to play and chose not to and said, well, Kai, eventually you're going to have to deal with this creature. It was masterfully played. Takes a mulligan, though. Kai's hand looks great. Being able to have two iterations as well as a just Juari disruption uh, and the mana to cast it, maybe a little light on red sources here, but not a huge problem. Uh, Kai's hand is a lot better than last game. So a decent opening here for Kai with double expressive iteration. Yeah, probably going to see that timely card on turn three. All the iterations here. We'll see if we get that excellent Dwari disruption here. There's not a ton of them. I wouldn't be too shocked if this Gargoyle is cast and it's going to get got. Yeah, look at this. Four Oof. spike. You'd love to see it. Oh, yeah, Kai's hyped baby. about that. Dwari disruption taking out that, 
that 5-4 before it can do anything. Oh, no. The dreaded iteration again. No uh -oh. lands. Even though Kai has a bunch of lands here, now this yeah. is just a glorified anticipate. You just get to pick one of these cards. Probably going to see the Shark Typhoon. It is very important. Maybe Prismari Command, since uh, Kai is a little weak to another Gargoyle. We know that's not the case. But, yeah, really, really brutal there. And a nice ordering there from Kai. Um, you know, you think just normally it doesn't matter, that number two and three, if you're not going to cast the card. But it really does. Making sure Shark Typhoon is still in your deck when you shuffle it away with, let's say, Field of the Ruin or Fabled Passage or something like that, being able to draw that late in the game versus Cinderclasm is a big deal. This is a better one. That's a lot better. That's a lot better. And Glimpse is another card that we saw those kind of those tricky things with Kling going on. Well, Glimpse does the same kind of thing, but a lot better against these rogues. Against the rogue deck, excuse me. Kai hitting his land drops. This is really important. We've seen yeah. him struggle through games where he didn't do that. But I mean, with a deck like this, you can't afford to... You've got to just have access to as much mana as possible. You know, there are decks, Corey, aggressive ones yeah. that don't want to hit their fourth land. Never want to hit their fifth one, you know, and are dead if they hit their sixth. Not so with a deck like Is It Control. Not so with most control decks. You want to hit the land drops basically every turn. That's why we see high land counts, 25, 26, 27 in some of them, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, I yep, mean, with... Absolutely. <laughs> well, with your end, it's like, what, 40 or something? I don't know. Who knows? No one knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Impossible it's, to it's, determine. It's large. That's for sure. Glimpse of Freedom now, drawing another land here. So Kai certainly no shortage of lands. Yeah, and Kai is pretty set up as far as trying to beat the draws that are trying to mill him out. But this Skyclave Shade, there's not really a clean answer for it. Of course, we do see removal, but, you know, being able to just bring it back repeatedly, we don't see, you know, any exile effects that we saw from maybe some of the Jeskai Mutate deck. So that card's just a problem. Maze Mind Tome is a nice one here, gaining a little bit of life. And of course, if you can just go QR Best the Sea God or 4-4 four, four Shark to be able to just lock it down, um, that is a, a, a decent way to deal with it, but it's not perfect. So here, what's Buddha thinking about? Does he want to, he, he's, he's considering whether he wants to hold the land or He's going to he's going to put the Maze Mind Tome in hand, which makes a lot of sense here. It gives him the most the, the greatest number of options. Interesting. Kai was hovering over the glimpse, looking to maybe completely control the amount of cards in his graveyard in case there's something like a Thieves Guild Enforcer into into the story, uh, play land five and try to make something like that happen. Um, but just decides to keep it there. We'll see if Kai wants to escape it now. This does open the door to a cling after this resolves, and then Glimpse is gone. Not the biggest deal. I think that's fine, and though, honestly. I think like, it's you've, fine got, too, yeah. you've got your two cards out of it. I, I think it's fine. Oh, excuse me. We do have some spike field hazards. That <laughs> Excellent. That was ideal. Yeah, I, I mean, spike field hazard is, is part of the mana base, so I'd be surprised to see it cut. Yep. Maze Mind Tome coming down. If this resolves, it's going to be pretty useful. Yeah, and, there's not uh, we, great answers. No, not really. I mean, you can Mystical Dispute it and what, make it cost five. That's not going to do any good. Mm. I like this. Maze Mind Tome opens up a, a completely new avenue of attack here for Kai Buddha, who now, uh, one of the one of the reasons, let's 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 get into this here, Corey. Yeah. One of the reasons that Shintaro Ishimura was able to pull ahead so convincingly and so uh in a way that wasn't really meaningfully contested by Buddha in game number one mm -hmm. is that turn after turn, Buddha was doing nothing with his mana, just sitting there with yes. a handful of, of, of irrelevant cards, disdainful strokes, whatever else you're in, wasn't doing anything, right? Ishimura, yep. on the other hand, was flashing back the cling to dust, flashing in threats, drawing cards, killing stuff, counting stuff, whatever, right? Yes. If you looked at how much mana was being spent by both of those players in game number one, it'd be Ishimura off the charts. Here now with, with, Maze Mind Tome, this gives Buddha something to do with his mana each turn. This means that he's not just passing, 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 never tapping his lands. He's got mana to put into something without giving up any equity when it comes to playing the game he wants to play. So Maze Mind Tome, it looks like an innocuous card, but it actually really, really shifts the texture of this matchup. 
100%. I couldn't have said better if I tried. That is exactly what this card's doing. And both players recognize this dynamic shift, right? Shintaro, mm. you can see, playing the threat out. He had he had plays to make this turn. He played both of them. I wouldn't be too shocked if next turn, with Shintaro only having dispute, I guess we have drawn to the lock now as well, but trying to be more aggressive and put some lines out here because you said it right, eventually Maze Mind Tome will take over here. Mm. And with that uh, spike field hazard being cast on the 3-1, that's the pressure. There goes the pressure. So now it is in Shintaro's court to be able yeah. to put put a foot down and just try to get in there. Maybe even with Luris. You know, Luris yeah. is not going to work out with Essence Scatter, but there's not many Essence Scatters in the deck for Kai. But, but the point is this. Ishimura didn't have to do that in game one. There was, yeah. no, there was no imperative for him to put the pedal to the metal and try to get Kai dead because Kai was just yep. spinning his wheels, didn't have extra cards in hand and was wasting all, was wasting all this mana. It was going unspent. Exactly. Ishimura now is contending against a control player who is drawing two cards a turn and is in a much better position to enact his game plan without mm -hmm. being kind of ground out by a player that was able to flashback, cling to dust, make sure the hand was nice and full with a good balance of threats and answers. So, I don't know. Like I know that I'm, I'm really, really, you know, putting up, putting Maze Mind Tome up, up, Tome up on this big pedestal. No, but you're exactly right. I want to point out that it's made a huge difference. Look at this. Kai's used, Kai's used yep. all his matter in a turn, and he didn't give up a single. He didn't give up any position to do that. Yep. Nope. And that's a product of not only Maze Mind Tome, but the escape cards as well. Now mm. Kai always has these things to do with his mana. Shintaro was really trying to tax Kai's ability to use the mana in game one because, well, you know what? There's giant spells to cast like yours, best the Sea God. And if you don't have sharks, you're not using your mana efficiently. So Shintaro was taking that away from game one. Now there's plenty of ways to use your mana from the is it side. And that's just why this matchup gets a lot better post board. And Kai recognizes it as well. And is, uh, you know, changing the way he's playing the game. So see what Ishimura wants to do now. This Phoenix of Ash is also a, uh, a nice little threat here for Buddha who taps a little bit of mana down in order to play it, but still got Essence Scatter, Omen of the Sea, and, of course, that Maze Mind Tome. Yeah, now it's a tricky threat. You deal with Phoenix of Ash, and it's coming back. Kling did a great job of taking care of the Glimpse of Freedom, but, you know, if Phoenix dies, that's another thing that's just going to control the amount of cards in Kai's mm. uh, graveyard to make sure End of the Story is not online, make sure Thieves Guild Enforcer is not online, and Merfolk Wind Robber, you know? If you can just kill that straight away and they don't get to draw a card, the card looks a lot worse. And this is the other important thing about escape cards. You know, we see Ox, we see Phoenix. They do work in this matchup in ways that people don't anticipate from the get-go because even if they get counted, even if they get killed... Just keeping the number of cards in your graveyard down, as you say, for these Thieves Guild Enforcers, for the, uh, for the Drowns, for the Into the Stories, for the Wind Robbers, mm -hmm. it makes a big difference. Omen of the Sea here and a Maze Mind Tome. We've talked about this. This is a completely different game of Magic now because Kai's got stuff to do with his mana. He's already pulled ahead three cards at instant speed. Uh, no, sorry, way more than that, five. He cast those, the, the, gl the, the, the Glimpse of Freedom. Yep, cast glimpse twice, Maze Mind Tome being active, and it is a big problem that Shintaro has not drawn a land in the last three or four, uh, maybe even five turns here. You know, that is a big problem as well. It really does constrict what Shintaro can do. Um, but yeah, so far, just the patience of Kai and recognizing what this game's about, and it's drawing cards, making land drops, and waiting until Shintaro blinks, and then act, and then, you know, acting accordingly and dealing with some of these things. So uh, nice playing from uh, both players, really. Worth pointing out here that Ishimura hasn't drawn as well uh, as in game number one. Game number one, he had a bunch of uh, drowns, he had a bunch of uh, Thieves Got Enforcers. His top of his library is very, very, very kind to him. Here, it hasn't been as uh, as smooth for Ishimura. He's got that uh, into mm -hmm. the story rotting away in his hand. A Lurus that isn't doing anything. Mystical dispute that hasn't been uh, hasn't produced any good targets. A second cling to dust is not as good in this situation. Stuck on four lands, so you know. Ishimura having a rougher time of it here. Buddha, who seems to be in the middle of being eaten by his T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, even the greats maybe get a little nervous. This is a huge moment. 8-0 right now. I want to remind everyone at home, 9-0 gets you just straight away into the top eight. That's it. 
Kai would be done playing, wouldn't have to come back and try to win those last rounds on the next day of competition. This is it for Kai if he takes this match down. So even, even the GOATs may be feeling the pressure a little bit, even though we know Kai has been here many, many times already in his, uh, you know, amazing career. Oh, yeah, he's no stranger to high-level, high-pressure magic, but... A win here locks up his spot in the top eight, gets him just two wins away mm -hmm. from a world championship. And yep. look, Kai's done a lot. As we said, seven wins, 11 top finishes. This bloke has got yep. a resume that uh, that is it, it's just so impressive. It's one of the best in the game. Hasn't won a world championship. Hasn't won a world championship. He'll be hungry for it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. What am I talking about? Of course he's won a world championship. <laughs> <laughs> of course he won a world championship oh man i thought that was such a good yeah no he, of course he uh he won uh a team worlds in sydney in 2002 all right well never yes mind. never mind absolutely ha but hasn't to be fair won, he, oh, has no, he has he has won a world of course he's won a single world championship 1999 tokyo worlds whoops but one thing he hasn't done, I mean, one thing he even said in his uh, dossier is he hasn't played one of these small world type mm -hmm. tournaments, right? Worlds used to just be a big tournament back in the day, right? Like it used to be kind of just like another pro tour. It's a little different now these days, and he's never gotten to play in one of those small like events. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure that's something he really wants to do it. And it looks like it's coming. And he's one step closer here. One step closer here. One game away from a top eight that would see him just two matches away from the slot of the world championship and you know that if Kai Buda went to the world championship in 2021 he would be playing for keeps he would be playing for oh, keeps yeah. he's already got his face on one card on void made prodigy could he become yeah. the first person to get his car his, his, his uh face on two of them well if it happens we could see one of those steps taken right here and right now with game number three, Shintaro Ishimura against Kai Buda. We saw Ishimura put on a masterclass in game number one. He drew well, he played well, and he got the job done. In game number two, however, Kai Buda found the maze nine times, found the incremental card advantage engines, and got himself across the line. And now yep. it comes down to this. Will we have Kai Buda as the final undefeated player at the end of day number one here? And as a result, be in our top eight already. Yep. on our first day of competition. We're about to find out. And one thing we have always known about Kai Buda, doesn't lose on Sundays. So this would be making it to Sunday, and that is scary for every other seven players in that Rivals, Rivals Gauntlet Top 8. That's going to be a huge game. Finds the force spike on top, and he's going to keep it. Love to see that. Love to see that, man. I never get sick of seeing people getting forced, unless it's me, and it is often me, but still, you know. Yeah, probably just a land good. here is what I would assume. Just making sure to hit his land drop doesn't really care if it's an untapped land or not. Um, and yeah, there, wow. Foretells the uh, the sword coming, even with the test of talents in hand. He's going yeah. to put that counter spell on ice. Come back to that. And that's Man. the big problem here. Shintaro has a pretty big opening of Luris, bring back Merfolk, Wind Robber here. Kai didn't really have a great answer for that anyways. Has the Prismari command to deal with it afterwards. Mm -hmm. Goes for the Hive instead. Got a Thieves Guild Enforcer ready to play. Or a Drown of the Lock, but I don't know how many cards there are in Buddha's Graveyard here. Ishimura to take advantage of. Mind Flayer. Joins the hand. There's the Thieves Guild Enforcer. Is this going to prompt an answer? We could just oh. see the Stomp. That leaves the Sword coming available as an option. Yep, Stomp in response to the trigger. Makes sense. And the Bone Crusher yeah, Giant will come back another day. I think Kai's got to be pretty happy with the fact that Luris and Wind Robber didn't hit the battlefield. It really would have put Kai on the back foot because Luris is one card you just kind of have to deal with uh, upon sight, but... As it stands, you at least get to stop that from going on. Now, we do need some lands as well, so maybe expressive iteration or something from Kai is what we're really looking for. But at, as it stands, Saw Coming is an answer here uh, for Luris, which is huge. So Buddha now still got that counter spell ready to go. Test of Talents as well. I mean, what are you hoping to snipe with the Test of Talents? Obviously, the, what, what's the dream? Drown, Drown into the, the story. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really it's really that, but even cling 
is pretty good, and you kind of just throw around Kling a lot if you're Shintaro, right? Because you just want to have it replace something. Mm -hmm. uh, but the main thing with Testa Talons is it's that peak ability. Knowing what to play around, um, you know, we we have this face-up information, and Kai plays like he has the face-up information with uh, <laughs> how good he is, but you don't have face-up information, so it is pretty tricky, and Testa Talents does kind of unlock that. Drown the Lock is going to take care of that saw it coming here. So Lurus of the Dream Dead will into the battlefield, but for no value, really importantly, which means that this Prismari command can take care that of it straight huge. away without any uh, extra value from something like a Womerfolk Wind Robber or a TGE. So it's not as disastrous as it looks here. It really isn't. Because that tapped out Ishimura, it means that Kai can remove this Cat Nightmare with impunity and a little treasure as well for later on should he need it. Still got Test of Talents up into the story. Still at reets, full retail here, seven mana. And as a result, Kai's just going to run out a 4-3 Bone Crusher Giant. And look at this play right here. Knowing that Kai only has five cards in Graveyard, so he's still a ways off from that magical seven card number mm -hmm. within to the story. And Shintar only has five lands. So this is the one window where he could stick a threat without something huge happening like into the story. Senses that that's the play. That's exactly what it is. And now has protection up for into the story next turn when Shintar can cast it. That was a huge read by Kai. Really, really clever because, you know, something would have to go disastrously wrong here for that turn to be, you know, a nightmare for Kai. There is probably a configuration. Thieves Guild Enforcer, actually. Issue more, yeah, yeah. Would, would then mill two and you could then cast yeah. the end of the story. But as it is, Kai really striking while the iron's hot and we're going to see it trade off against the hive. And I don't know that Kai Buddha minds that at all. I really don't no. think that bothers him. That like was a I think it's a good draw for Shintaro. I think if that uh, that Bone Crusher Giant were a stone rain, which is what it ended up being, three mana destroy target land, I, I think that'd be fine. Yeah, nope, I totally agree, especially because we see the application of Hive once we get these escape cards down, right? Like it doesn't look great now, but you know, I'm sure Shintaro is going to be doing a little bit more milling at some point here. We'll see if Shintaro blocks. This is really interesting because blocking. Oh, that still does put seven cards in. So now here's the interesting. Let's see if Shintaro goes for into the story and it's going to get met with a test of talents here. You're in, put into the hand here. I thought for a moment he cast. I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's all good. <laughs> put it in the hand, ready to be cast it another time. Thieves Guild Enforcer into the story at now the discount, the low, low price of four mana. Worth reminding people that uh, Ishimura is only playing two copies of into the story. Yep. Ooh. Big draw. The Phoenix so of Ash Phoenix is a very, very nice one. To pressure, and we still have the Test of Talons back for Kai, mm. but if Shintaro can put together a Mystical Dispute, a Negate, a Drown in the Lock or something to unlock this into the story, that would be a huge swing. So big draw step here for Shintaro coming up. So Thieves Good Enforcer going to mill over a couple of other cards. That's just food for the Phoenix, though, should it ever hit the bin. Off the top, it's a Skyclave Shade. That's not what he wants to see. That's not going to help him. Okay, so here is an attack and the shade coming down. If we can get a land from, if Kai Buddha can get a land here, Mind Flare with Test of Talons up creates a gigantic clock here. And with only mm. one card, you don't really play around too much. There's the land. There's the land. There's the land. Yep, this is going to be massive here. Mind Flare leaves up Test of Talents. Kai Buddha firing on all cylinders, drawing ever closer to this 9 and 0 oh finish. Locking Don't... up the top eight already. That's it. That Don't call a it a comeback. Draw. Kai Buddha. He hasn't left, my friends. He hasn't <laughs> left. Phoenix of Ash comes in into the story. Ishimura's only real option doesn't cast it, though. This is a test of talents in more ways than one. Draws a land. That's not what you want to see. If you're Ishimura. Advantage. Huge in Kai, ba Kai Buddha's favor here. Phoenix of Ash being able to pump uh, can already make this seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, this is already a ten point attack if we want to pump that Phoenix twice. This is really a two turn clock. Shintaro has to find something next turn. Yeah, and I think he's at a point where he has to just sort of uh, 
just throw the spaghetti at the wall and hope some of it sticks because this into the story has been rotting away in his hand for a long time. Look at his face. He's scared to look at the screen as he casts it by the look of things. Oh, my goodness. A quick prayer to the old gods and the new, hoping that Kai is just sitting on a ham sandwich, but we know that he's not. It is a rich chicken club with a test of talents on the top. And this test of talents is almost certainly going to seal the deal here for Kai Buddy, you would think. Into the story, put on the stack, test of talents, snapped off to get rid of it. And we'll now also Kai's remove the see second the good copy. News. And it's plain sailing for Kai Buddha at 9-0. and oh, Finds himself in the top eight of the Rivals Gauntlet, locks it up on day one. And this is the sort of thing that you expect from the German juggernaut, one of the greatest players of all time. And I think all of us have to very, very seriously reevaluate the way that we talk about 